Hi and welcome to a new Milky Way photography video. If you don't know me or if you are new in the community, my name is Don Safara. I'm a professional landscape astrophotographer. And since we are in the peak of the Milky Way season, I wanted to share with you a few videos with some tips and some techniques that I want to help you improve your Milky Way photography. So this is the first video of a series of four. The last one is going to be this Sunday and it's going to be a live webinar, a live uh, stream. But I want to show you something that is going to change your Milky Way photography forever. So stay tuned because this Sunday at 1 p.m. EST, we're going to show you something that is going to be a game changer. In this first video, I want to see one of the most frequent questions that I receive and it's how can I improve the quality in my Milky Way images? Well, first of all, we have to define what makes a good quality Milky Way image. And the first thing is having stars, like pinpointed stars with no trails. As you know, that's why we are using some rules to define which is the maximum shutter speed, 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds, whatever. But that's very important. We have to make sure that the stars are like pinpoint. Secondly, we have to check how the quality in the stars in the corners of the frame. As you know, when we are shooting, especially with a wide angle, we'll see in the corners more comma, more chromatic aberrations, and more deformations and other things. So the quality of the stars in the corners of the image is going to be also important. However, the most important thing that will define the quality in your Milky Way image is going to be the noise. If your image is noisy and it's having like this kind of grainy feeling, it will provide like a sense of uh, low quality and it won't stand out. So that's why the most important thing in that if you want to have like a wood quality Milky Way image is to have an image with no noise and with a clean sky with all the stars and no noise. That's why in this video I want to show you two different ways to get rid of the noise. One is one technique uh, to apply the noise after taking the shot. The other one is the technique that we can apply in the field. I've been using these two techniques for many years and they are my favorite techniques to get rid of the noise. So let's get it started, let's jump into the computer and I'm going to show you how to get rid of the noise in your images. So for the first example we have this image captured in the Eastern Sierra in California. And in this Milky Way image, uh, we see like this, it looks fine. Uh, the settings are 13 seconds, f1.8, and ISO 6400. So as you see, very extreme settings with a very wide aperture and a very high ISO. So if we zoom in the image, we can see that there is a ton of noise, especially in some of the shadows in the Milky Way and some of the shadow areas in the foreground. So I'm going to show you how to reduce the noise very quickly and in a very easy way. We can apply the noise reduction in Lightroom or Photoshop, but let me tell you that these ways are not very effective. You can get rid of the noise, but both Lightroom and Photoshop usually wash out all the details in the image and you can have this kind of a cartoony looking in your shot. So that's why I never recommend using Lightroom or Photoshop for your noise reduction. Um, I like using a plugin called the Noise AI, which uses like artificial intelligence, and this plugin is much more advanced, reducing the noise while keeping the details. And this is the key, preserving the details in your images. So we're going to use Topaz Denoise to fix the noise in this image. Um, you can use the noise both in Lightroom and Photoshop, it's the same way. I'm going to show you in Photoshop because it's a bit quicker and we can see uh, the before and after a bit better. So we are now in Photoshop and it's very simple. We just have to duplicate the layer using Ctrl J or Command J. And now go to Filter, Topaz Labs and Topaz Denoise AI. Now the plugin is going to launch and I'm going to show you how it works. It's pretty simple and we'll get rid of the noise in a few seconds. So this is the interface in Topaz Denoise AI. And the first thing I like to do is go into an area where I can have some part of the sky, especially there is the Milky Way, Galactic Core, and an area of the foreground. So this area looks perfect because we have both. And now in top of the noise, uh, the first thing we have to consider is that there are four different ways to reduce the noise. So there is the standard way, A clear, low light, and severe noise. These four methods work differently and they reduce the noise using different patterns. But if you're shooting the Milky Way and shooting at night, my most recommended method is low light. So if we go to low light, and as you see here, we have a preview at the bottom, and this is automatically loading. Now, uh, what I recommend here is to start working with the auto mode. So we're gonna start with the auto and see the before and after. 
And as you see now, Topaz is loading. Usually it works pretty fast. And in a few seconds we have, yeah, it's loaded now. We can see the before and after. So you see, we are reducing the noise, but this is not enough. So we have to apply a biggest reduction. And to do this, we can tweak these sliders. First of all, the remove noise. We can reduce a bit more of noise and also enhance the sharpness. So we can increase the sharpness. And in the recover original detail, this depends on the image. You want to recover more details or not. So we can leave something around the middle. And now we can check how's the before and after. So it's loading now. Yeah, and I think that this is looking much better. So once it's ready, it's just very simple. Hit apply and we'll see the result in Photoshop. So we are back in Photoshop now. And if we zoom in the image, we can check the before and after. And as you see, we're eliminating all the noise, not only in the sky, but also in the foreground. So for example, in this area, and it's gonna be more noticeable in the shadows, like here, for example, you will see the before and after. We're cleaning all the noise in a very easy and effective way. So you have already some noise in your images, using Topaz in Noise AI is gonna be a great way to get rid of the noise very quickly. Now we're gonna get back to Lightroom because I want to show you the second way to reduce the noise and this is be a technique called stacking. The stacking is a very powerful and easy technique that you can apply when you're in the field and in post-processing. So for doing this technique, uh, first of all, you have to be in the field and take a series of images. So instead of taking one image of the Milky Way, you should take a number of images, ideally between 10 to 15 images, and that way, what you're doing with a software like maybe Photoshop or any other dedicated piece of software for stacking, you can stack all the images together and reduce the noise. As you know, the noise is random in all the images and when you are taking several images and creating an average of the noise, the noise will be eliminated. This might sound a bit complex, but it's very easy to do and very easy to implement. So we are gonna see an example here. We are in Lightroom and we have this example. This is one shot taken with the normal settings, 11 seconds, f1.8, ISO 6400. It's a bit noisy if we check and zoom in the image. And what I did in this case to apply this technique, I took a series of images, 10 in this case, and what we're going to do here is apply the stacking technique, see in this example. And the first step that we have to do is, first of all, always prepare the files. For the file preparation here, we should adjust the white balance, we can maybe uh, fine tune the Lightness, the light on the image, if we have, for example, to increase the exposure, decrease the shadows, whatever you need to do. Uh, this looks pretty fine in terms of white balance and light, so I'm not gonna do anything. In terms of detail, I'm going to take out the sharpening because I don't want any extra sharpening here. Lens correction, we can remove the chromatic aberrations. And then once it's ready, and this is a very important step, we have to take the settings of this image and copy and paste into your images. So we can right click, go to develop settings, copy settings. We can copy all the settings that we applied and now select all the other images in the series and go to develop settings and paste settings. So these are now very quickly applied. And once we have all the images, this is another very important step is to export the images with the right settings. So for this, we can select all the images, right click and go to export. And once we're in the export module, here we have to select TIFF. We always want to have TIFF files, no compression, 60 min depth with Adobe RGB. In the image sizing, I don't want to apply any resize. So it's the maximum size. Uh, no output sharpening, that's again very important. And the last thing that you have to mark always is the metadata. Especially if you're using a dedicated piece of software like we will use for stacking, you always have to do with all the metadata included in your images. So once this is ready, we can hit export and get back to the software. Yeah, and as I was saying, there are different ways to do the stacking. 
You can do the stacking in Photoshop, it's possible, but it's gonna be very time consuming and not very effective. There are gonna be many misalignments, many problems, and it's gonna be, as I said, very time consuming. What I usually recommend is using a dedicated stacking software. So if you're using Mac, you can use a Starry Landscape Stacker. It's the best software, it's very easy, very fast, and it works perfectly. If you're a Windows user, you can use Equator, which is a free piece of software, and it works very similar. I use Mac, so I'm gonna show you how a Starry Landscape Stacker works in this case, but just bear in mind that Sequator works very similar. So we're getting to the software, it's called Starry Landscape Stacker. And here, the first thing we have to do, it's uh, automatically open the folder where you exported your images. So here we have all my images and I'm gonna hit open. And now this software is gonna load all the images in the software and it's going to detect where is the sky and where is the ground. Yep, so the images are loaded and now what you're gonna see is uh, your sky with some red dots. That's because the software is trying to automatically detect where is the sky. To apply the stacking, the software must detect where is the sky, where is the ground, and that way we need to fine tune, if necessary, help the software decide where is the sky and where is the ground. If we zoom in, for example, we see that all the red dots are in the sky, but for example, and this happens in some situations, as you can see some red dots here in the foreground, like this, what we have to do is just go to the erase red dots here on the left module and delete the red dots here. And same if you are, for example, going to the sky and there are some area where you can find red dots, like in this corner, for example, we can just add a few red dots. Um, same here. And you don't have to worry if you don't see many red dots in the line above the horizon. Yeah, maybe in this area. And once this is ready, we can hit find sky and the software is going to create a mask automatically just for the sky so here we can see all the blue mask is for the sky and the only thing we have to do now is again have the software decide where is the sky so here we can paint with the sky selected all these areas and same here for example this corner yeah and check always here as i said the line out of the horizon is not really critical so we can leave this like this uh, it should be fine yeah it looks right now once it's ready we can hit align and composite and the software is going to do automatically all the stacking in just a few seconds so we're gonna wait a couple of seconds and now i'll show you the final result yep so it is completed now and here it looks maybe similar but it was the man and we go to the galactic core for example here you can see that the image is completely free of noise so if we compare for example here this is my composite image which is my stacking if i compare to a single shot like this one for example you're gonna see here the difference so as you see here especially in the shadows in the milky way there is a ton of noise and if i click to the composite image we have an image with much more quality less noise more details and much better if we go, for example, this applies not only for the sky, but also for the foreground. So for example, in this area, in these mountains, if I click to a normal shot, it's gonna be very noisy. And then when I apply the stacking, the noise is completely gone. So as you see, this software works pretty well. And if you are a Mac user, you can perfectly use this. It's very fast. As I said, if you are a Windows user, you can use Equator. I'm gonna leave the links in the description in case you can check them out. And yeah, this is a really great technique to get rid of the noise. So this is a very simple technique that you can apply in the field. When you take a shot, instead of taking one image, take 10, 15 images. It's gonna take maybe one, two minutes. And then go to this software or to Sequator if you're in Windows, it works pretty similar, and apply this technique. Your images are gonna look much, much better. However, if you're looking for the best quality in your Milky Way images, these methods are not perfect. The main reason is because we are using a high ISO. As we said before, the saturation speed is limited when you are shooting the Milky Way. We have like maybe 10, 15 seconds, uh, 20 seconds uh, to, to shoot the Milky Way. And this uh, forces us to raise the ISO. 
When you raise the ISO, you are creating more noise in your images. This is something that we tackle with these two techniques, but at the same time, we have less dynamic range. This is something not many people talk about, but it's also one of the most important and crucial things when you want a quality image of the Milky Way. The quality is not only the noise, but also the colors, the details, and when you use a high ISO, you are vanishing and washing out all the details in your image. The problem with this is that I like the noise that we can fix in post-processing with different techniques. Um, an image with a low dynamic range is almost impossible to recover, especially the colors and, as I said, most of the details. But there is one way to fix this, and the way is simply to take a longer exposure. You might be thinking, but is that possible? Can you take a longer exposure of the Milky Way for maybe one, two, or three minutes? And the answer is yes, you can do it. However, you need to use a star tracker. A tracker is just like a simple device that we place between the tripod and the camera, and it's gonna compensate the air rotation. That way we can capture images for two or three minutes and use better settings that are gonna allow us to take cleaner images with all the colors with all the details and we don't have to apply noise reduction and other techniques so the answer to get the maximum quality in your milky way images is tracking this however can be daunting especially if you have never heard about this that's why in the next video i'm going to explain to you all the basics of tracking we're going to talk about the different trackers and also how to use a tracker. So these are like a few basic ideas, but as I said, this is very simple and the tracker is gonna be the most important element when you want to capture the most quality in your Milky Way images. So don't forget that next Sunday at 1 p.m. EST, we have a live webinar, a live stream, where I'm gonna show you something that is gonna change your Milky Way photography forever. It's gonna be a game changer. And until then, I'll show you in the next video how to capture more quality in your Milky Way images.